This is QTV News. I am Mamadou Gajaga. Thanks for joining us. Coming up tonight, Narek's managing director, Baba Fatajo, is fired. Interior Minister is determined to strengthen the fight against illicit drugs and organized crime, says Minister Ibrahim Mbalo. Outgoing French ambassador to the Gambia assaults the French government's support to the Gambia government. Banjulians express concern over the seemingly out of control construction of warehouses. For more on this and other stories, stay tuned. Welcome back and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is QTV News. The managing director of the National Water and Electricity Company, Baba Fatajo, has been fired on Tuesday. However, no reasons were publicly given for his sacking. Fatajo has been the head of NAREC since 2017. The office of the president in a statement said Mr. Fatajo will be appointed as a diplomat in the Foreign Service. It also added that President Barrow has appointed Mr. Alpha Robinson as the new managing director of the NAREC National Water and Electricity Company. The Minister of Interior, Ibrahim Mbalo, says his ministry is determined to strengthen the fight against illicit drugs and organized crime. He was speaking on International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trade. Drugs such as marijuana, hashish and cocaine are mostly commonly abused in the Gambia. Here is an excerpt. Let me emphasize that we are determined to dismantle an organized criminal network that may emerge in our jurisdiction. We will deal with any such groups without negotiation to safeguard our youth from misery and suffering caused by drugs. We shall not relent in our quest of ensuring that the future of the country is not mortgaged to drug dealers, drug peddlers, and their patrons. We will implement robust actions to strengthen our interdiction capacity and support criminal justice system to ensure speedy trial of persons charged with drug-related offenses. This will guarantee the right of accused persons and promote compliance with national and international legal requirements. Fellow Gambians, the Gambia, like other countries in this sub-region, remains vulnerable to the trafficking and consumption of illicit drugs. There is a clear nexus between drug trafficking and terrorist financing. The apparent role of drug trafficking in the organized crime cycle is too serious a threat that cannot be ignored. I therefore call on all Gambians and residents of the Gambia to be vigilant and work towards complementing government's effort in the fight against drug by reporting suspicious drug trafficking and related activities to the Drug Law Enforcement Agency of the Gambia and other law enforcement agencies. Drug knows no race, tribe, or political affiliation. To fight drugs requires coordinated approach in awareness creation an alternative development for a healthy and safe environment. Former APRC National Assembly member Demba Dem continues his testimony on Tuesday at the TRRC. His testimony was in relation to his arrest and victimization in 2006. Also giving testimony was Warrant Officer Class 1 Lamin Dur, the official driver of former Junta member Yankuba Ture, who also testified on Tuesday. His testimony was in relation to the November 11 incident and the assassination of former Finance Minister Usman Koro Tise. For more on this story, Ansumana Isoinyasi. Two witnesses testified on Tuesday at the ongoing TRRC public hearings. Former APRC Member of Parliament Demba Dem continued his testimony on his alleged arrest, detention and torture in the aftermath of the foiled March 2006 coup. For his part, WO1 Lamindur the official driver of former junta member Yankuba Ture testified on the November 11, 1994 incident in which a group of soldiers were summarily executed for allegedly plotting to overthrow the AFPRC. 
He also testified on the assassination of former finance minister Usman Koro Sise. Continuing his testimony, Dembadem told the commission that he was mercilessly tortured by the junglers while being escorted to the NIA headquarters. He alleged that during his interrogation, Alaji Martin had threatened to kill him if he refused to comply with them. Following his refusal to comply, he was mercilessly tortured by the junglers. Did he um, go through with his threat to cut your hand with the bayonet? Yes, that was the time they hand me over with the junglers, the black, black boys. They said, let me go downstairs. I went downstairs. I was handcuffed, made to kneel, kneel down on the a concrete floor. My head was covered with a black plastic bag and a very cool bucket of water was poured on my body all over. Then they start beating me. The, uh, the beating went to an interval of about 30 minutes because they will beat and stop and start texting again. Furthermore, he told the commission that he was forced to sign a statement prepared by a panel of investigators. He was subsequently brought before the High Court and charged with two counts, treason and conspiracy to commit treason. Following a trial that lasted one year nine months, he was eventually acquitted and discharged by the court. However, his freedom came five days later. Next up was W.O. Wan Lamindu, the official driver of former junta member Yankova Ture. In his testimony, he alleged that former junta vice chairman Sana Sabali ordered the execution of the November 11, 1994 detainees at the forest in Bikama. Ndur, who claims to have witnessed the executions, alleged that all junta members except Chairman Jame were present at the forest. Testifying on the assassination of former finance minister Osman Koro Sise, the witness alleged that on the day Koro was allegedly murdered, Yankopature had ordered him to take his family to Edward Singate's house and the guards to the beach, and that he saw Edward Singate at Yankopature's house when he and Ndur returned. So after you saw all those vehicles parked outside um, Lieutenant Yankovature's residence, what did you do? I was able to get out of the car. I was able to get out of the car. I was able to get out of the car. I was able to get out of the car. I was able to get out of the car. I was able to get out of the car. I stood outside there, sat on my vehicle out there. Can you tell us whether you could observe anything while you were inside the vehicle? Ako fo ibo moto kono tembo me besiringe fo ya kudo soto ne mem crossi wala enya emenge mem membeke kanje ah na Edward je tuo kono je yes I saw Edward inside the house there the the lorry je among among tara bungo kono de bara the lorry he was standing ha he was not inside the house but he was out there standing ha ba ba hama grassi sol beda mento je mi jani kafuta bungo nyimpang just uh, where you had the hammer grass before you got into the, the main house. He also alleged that after Edward Singate and the fleet of vehicles parked outside had left the compound, he went into the house but was taken aback by what he saw. He alleged that the house was untidy and had a bad smell. Following the announcement of Koro's death, he said there were rumors that the council had a hand in his death. Anshmana is a for KTV News. The Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology organizes a two-day national research policy workshop. The event is meant to gauge the views of stakeholders on the Ministry's efforts to produce a draft national policy and strategic action plan for research. Umudula Minchoy reports. The making policy to address pressing national issues must be informed by grassroots research evidence. In fact, Economic, social, and industrial growth relies heavily on research. The Gambia is a country poorly developed in both economic and industrial aspects. Furthermore, the so far negligent attitude of most of its people and institutions to research might be the main obstacle to meaningful development since independence. This initiative by the ministry couldn't have come at a better time, with Gambian officials admitting that the country has never produced a national research policy. The permanent secretary of the ministry says the workshop is among many other steps to fostering research for national developments to address this problem. Perhaps uh, 
the absence of, uh, uh, of a National Research Council and uh, a National Research Funding Mechanism uh, must have, uh, must have uh, contributed to the low level of uh, research activity in the country. I saw the opinion of this participant asking whether research progress can be realized in a country without a well-equipped national library. The young researcher says a well-equipped national library must exist before there can be any research for national development. But I discovered that they have put the cart before the horse. Because through the Gambia National Library, we were hoping that they will help us to have a standard university library at the UTG. The Gambia is the only country in West Africa that has a university without a library. So you cannot talk about research without having a standard library. It is obvious that countries at the leading edge of development in science and technology give great prominence to research. They support research in order to shape and better the lives of their people. The Gambia might be moving towards this direction, but is currently ill-equipped to make significant strides and faces a long journey ahead. Mohamed Lamin Choi for QTV News. A two-day regional consultative workshop on electoral reforms is underway in Senegambia. The meeting is organized by the Independent Electoral Commission for representatives from Kanifeng Municipal Council. Babakar Sise reports. During the workshop, the chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission, Aliou Mamarnjai, spoke about the importance of electoral reforms to ensure free and fair elections. He also revealed that two more political parties will soon join the political arena and that many more individuals have expressed interest to run for the country's top job. Currently, there are 10 registered political parties. And right now at the office, we have two that are almost completed. But we also have a request from 30 different individuals who have asked us the condition under which they will form a party. The need to embark on a reform is key in the Commission's drive to improve electoral service delivery to Gambians. In view of this, the Commission decided to conduct stakeholder consultations across the whole country to obtain first-hand information from stakeholders and to make at all times a free, fair and transparent electoral system. The Councilor for Serekunda Central, Yama Samate Law, spoke about proper demarcation of constituencies and taking consideration of gender aspects during the reform process. The type of electoral system we have here, we think that we have to reform it so that to have the better one. Like example, for instance, the voting system and the demarcation of the last issue should be revised and see how best we can have a good demarcation area because some of the areas how they demarcated is small some are big i think now the electoral reform we will have the gender issue there that's the quota system because all the female ladies like me we are looking for words to see where there is a gender issue you know considered in the election that's the quota system also because and whenever we are there, we think that quota system is very important and I should be there at the electoral reform also. Musa Cham, councillor for London Corner, says despite political differences, the Gambia should be considered first. Despite what political party you belong or whatever group you belong, the greater set is the country, that is Gambia. So we are very pleased to be part of you know, this consultative gathering. The ward councillor for Bundung 6 Johnson, Suleiman Jame, thanked the IEC for involving the local authorities in electoral reforms. Consultative meeting is very good to consult whatever you do. So it's true that you can get what you want. So bringing people together, especially we, the local authorities on the ground, representing the grassroots people, so it will be always be very important and good for us to come on board to represent them and also for them to... Uh, allow us to also see our, our opinion regarding the electoral reform because normally uh, these are laws that normally you know guide our elect election process. The expectation of two more political parties joining the fray 
means the Gambia's already bulging political scene is going to get even more crowded. Babu Karsise, QTV News. Natives of Banjul have expressed concerns over the seemingly out-of-control construction of warehouses in what should be residential zones of the capital. Both the Banjul City Council and Department of Physical Planning say they are working jointly to bring solutions. QTV's Mumud Lamin Choi went to Banjul to investigate and he now files on this report. Banjul is not only a center for state administration, but also one of the busiest commercial hubs in the country. However, the people are worried that commerce might leave some homeless in future. Thus, warehouses are constructed in the available residential zones of the city. It is one of the smallest cities in one of the tiniest, least developed countries in Africa. Development in the Gambia's capital since from independence is not fast enough. To address the situation, both central and local governments have promised to fix the city's problems, especially in terms of infrastructure. This might be a goodwill gesture from the right authorities, but Banjulians, particularly the young, say they are residents first before any further developments and that they need actions, not words. It's because of every time that you build a warehouse, I realize that there's a particular number of people that normally um, you know, start move from that particular destination to another. So in most cases, there's 90% chance that those people normally move to the combo. So imagine if they do, and myself actually, there's a day that I sell my house and move to the combo, so who's going to be in the, in, in the capital? Let's halt and see what we can do. If you're going to sell your compound, wherever, whenever you sell it, make sure that it's not for warehouses. There are a lot of areas people can go to build their warehouses, not in the big city where people live. We, um, uh, we do hope that if we voted for them, if they are in power, the situation will, be, will, will change. It will be thing of the past. But as of now, we haven't seen any progressive um, effort that have been made by either the council or the central government. The Banjul City Council said they share concerns of the residents of their municipality and that they have engaged the Department of Physical Planning, which, according to the council, has agreed to temporarily suspend issuance of permits for warehouse constructions in the city. The city council also revealed that they are drafting a bylaw which will contain a provision to regulate the prevalence of big storage facilities in the residential zones. As far as Banjo City Council is concerned, we are putting all mechanisms in place to make sure that warehouses are not constructed, more especially within the inner city. We also reached out to the Department of Physical Planning for comments, but they were unable to give us a comment on camera to shed light on the matter. They did say that the department has already established a committee expected to give recommendations drawing demarcation lines between commercial and residential zones. Mahmoud Lamin Choi for QTV News. The Gambia Maritime Administration and stakeholders in the maritime industry, in collaboration with the International Maritime Organization, IMO, celebrated the Day of the Seafarer. The event recognizes the sacrifice and braveries of seafarers displayed in moving ships laden with cargo around the globe for all our benefit. Part of the celebrations included a march past to the Arch 22 in Banjul. Ajibin Tudrami has more details. This year, the day was celebrated under the theme, I am on board with gender equality. This is the first time the internationally commemorated day has been celebrated in the Gambia by the Maritime Administration and recognizes the important role sailors play. By having this year celebration focusing on gender equality, it promotes and sheds a light on the role of women at sea. This is important because in the Gambia, men are the ones mostly employed in the sector and there are very few, if any, women member in this field. It is expected by highlighting this, the situation will change. Mustafa Marong, Director General of GMA, commended the sailors' diligent effort. It's the work performed by our brave seafarers operating massive ships through rickiest and roughest seas and oceans 
in ensuring large volumes of cargoes are delivered at our ports to meet our demands. It's very essential to recognize the crucial roles played by women folks in this industry and as well to help improve their productivity in both quality and quantitative terms to match the global reality. Nicholas Alfred Biel, board chairman of the Gambia Maritime Administration, says the day is also important to encourage female seafarers. As women are important and that participating in seafaring is an essential undertaking. Much of this is being, is being driven by the World Maritime Day team empowering women in the maritime community. It is already clear that this team has a very strong and far-reaching resonance. It provides um, an opportunity to highlight the possibilities for women as well as their contributions that they are already making in a wide range of maritime careers and professions. But the focus this year will be firmly on one aspect of that community, the female seafarers. I can recall in 1976, a long time ago, while it's at the Ghana Nautical College, the first female cadets were recruited by Ghana. As some say, what a man can do, a woman can do better. Binta Jalo Sisi, senior finance manager, agreed on the term. She says as the world is diverse, promoting gender equality is important. Binta adds that women should come on board and embrace the profession. To come on board and enroll in this uh, noble profession. It's a profession though dangerous, but now as we are, the world is dynamic and everything is moving. So we, I think what a man can do, a woman can do better. If we encourage women to come in and we take part in this, it would be very interesting and I'm more cautious because everywhere you go, wherever, whichever area you touch, you'll see some challenges that you may encounter. So it's just to be more cautious and be determined whatever you do. If you have passion for your job and whatever you are doing. You'll... Seafaring comes with a lot of difficulties, including the roughness of the sea, and health conditions such as cardiovascular diseases, among others. Binta gave a piece of advice to women. It's just to be more cautious because everywhere you go, wherever, whichever ever area you touch, you'll see some challenges that you may encounter. So it's just to be more cautious and be determined whatever you do. If you have passion for your job and whatever you are doing. The challenge for maritime health specialists and those in the industry, including reducing the occupational hazards and making the profession both safer and an attractive proposition. Ajibintu Drame, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's take a quick look at our main news stories. The managing director of the National Water and Electricity Company, Baba Fatijo, has been fired on Tuesday. However, no reasons were publicly given for his sacking. Fatajo has been the head of NAWEC since 2017. The office of the president in a statement said, Mr. Fatajo will be appointed as a diplomat in the foreign service. It added that President Barrow has appointed Mr. Alpha Robinson as the new managing director of NAWEC. The Ministry of Interior, Ibrahim Mbalo, says his ministry is determined to strengthen the fight against illicit drugs and organized crime. He was speaking on the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drugs. The outgoing French ambassador to the Gambia has given his assurances of the French government's support to the Gambia during its transition journey. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news.